This is a short book review on the passage by Justin Cronin. This is a post-apocalyptic book brought on by a virus set in America. The main character is a six-year-old girl named Amy. So in this, the military are experimenting on a virus and their aim is to greatly prolong the length of human life. So they're going to try and eradicate all diseases and to make people who are indestructible. Uh, perhaps they're even immortal. So they're interested in this to create the perfect soldier and to create the perfect army, which is essentially undefeatable. Now for this, they need test subjects. So they decide to recruit the FBI. And we follow an FBI agent named Walgast. And he goes to prisons and he talks to men who are on death row. And these are all men who don't really have any friends, they don't have any family, they don't really have any human connection left in the world at all. So there isn't really anyone out there who would care or even notice if they lived or died. And obviously his like cincher here is that, you know, is there anything worse than death row? So obviously I don't want to give any spoilers, but as it's post-apocalyptic, um, bad things happen. Um, so the book is split into two main parts. You have uh, before the apocalypse and then afterwards. And then you have this time jump between these two times of almost a century. So in the second half of the book, you're following this uh, group of people who are living in this very safe environment, but very isolated. So this group of people are descended from a group of children who were successfully evacuated during the apocalypse and time's moved on and these children are obviously grown up and they've had families, they've had children of their own. So all these people don't know much about the world before the apocalypse apart from what their parents and grandparents have told them and obviously because they were so little when they were evacuated, maybe five, six, that they don't really remember much of the real world and um, the world before. So they're all here and they don't really get to leave unless they're on a job that lets them to. And they never have any real contact with outsiders. They don't even know if there's anyone else left in the world except them. So to give you just one little interesting bit about them without ruining anything, um, if you're a child and you're eight years or under, you live in this just school environment and the main adult you see each day is teacher and there's only one teacher and you do obviously get to see your parents but you don't live with them and you just all stay here with kid as kids and just kind of have this lovely little extra sheltered life um and then on the day you turn eight years old you essentially hear the secret of the apocalypse and you learn the truth about the world. So you kind of lose your innocence on your eighth birthday. So this is a very slow paced book. It's almost a thousand pages in length. It gives the author time to really focus on character development. So I would say this is definitely a character driven book rather than a plot driven book. Um, so I think that's actually a really nice touch because in some books you just learn a lot about your main characters and that's essentially it. Whereas with this one, you learn a lot about nearly every single character in there. You get backstories for basically everyone and basically every single character is really well fleshed out. So another thing about this book is that it's presented in a really interesting way. You have email communications from the man who originally kind of discovered the virus, as it were. He went on this expedition to Bolivia and he's got email communication back and forth between him and his friend who works at the university that they both work for. And then you've also got journal entries from different people, from different eras. And then you've also got official government notices from the time of the apocalypse. So it's nice to kind of see the story kind of presented in a few different ways. So you're kind of picking apart different things from different times and different people, and you get to kind of piece the story together a little bit rather than just see it all unfold 
in a kind of usual way. So I think that's a really nice touch as well. So this book is the first in a trilogy. This one was published in 2010. So the other two books are out there and you can just binge read the whole series if you want to, which is kind of how I like to read books. Um, I'm definitely going to be continuing on with the series and overall I'd give this book four stars. Thank you.